Ladies and gentlemen, now introducing the beat. Hear that? That is the foundation on which all music is made. And it's not so much about the sound of it as the way that it makes you feel. That's where music transcends the sound and becomes more of a feeling. That's pretty much what our senses are all about. They're all connecting to the way that what we hear or see or smell or taste makes us feel. At least that's what I think. So I'm just going to let this play for most of the video. It's about 90 beats per minute. It's a bass drum. It makes no difference. It could be a snare, it could be a wood block. If you got a metronome at home or on the computer, I suggest just turning it on and taking a few minutes to just listen to it. it may seem pointless, but to learn, to understand anything about how to read and write rhythms, First thing you gotta be able to do is feel the beat. So, with this beat playing, we're going to look at some things, some ways that we organize what we hear, because that's what the whole process of playing and organizing and music and music theory and all that stuff is all about. It's about basically taking this sort of abstract stuff that's happening in the world, these sounds that we can make, and trying to make them into something that can be written down and preserved uh, and understood and communicated to other people. That's pretty much the whole point of writing music, right, as opposed to just playing it. And being able to write music is important, so you can do what I just said. You can communicate to other people so that they can share that music that you've created. So, first thing we need to be able to do uh, is we gotta take these beats that we're hearing, this pulse of the music, and we gotta organize it some, somewhat. Alright, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this beat and we're gonna organize it into something called measures. Alright, a measure is a space. Pretty easy, right? There's a space right in here. Now what is creating the beginning and end of this measure? These are called bar lines or measure lines, however you want to call it. Uh, and it's just a space. And it's a vast expanse that we can fill with sounds. Right now it's just a void, an abyss infinitely large space where nothing is. So that's not good. We gotta define how much space are we looking at here. Otherwise we don't know anything about what we're about to play. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these beats that we hear and we're going to think about, okay, how could we divide these into a smaller amount, because we probably heard hundreds of beats just since the beginning of this video. So how can we organize these into smaller amounts where we can more easily keep track of them? We do that kind of arbitrarily by just saying, hey, over here, I'm going to put four beats in this measure. Alright? So I took this space and I said, let's divide it into four pieces. Each piece is a beat. And now each beat, each one of these beats has an identity. This is where beat one is, beat two, beat three, beat four. So let's just count along with the beat and see how this connects with the measure that we created. There's our beat. And here we go. One, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Great. 
Now we're dealing with not an infinite number of beats, but with only four. And at the end of our four beats, we just go back and we do it again. We're counting in these small chunks, these measures of beats. And we've defined how many beats we're going to count by putting this number over here, number four. All right. Cool. With me so far? Uh, all right. I'm going to pause this beat because it's driving me insane. All right. We'll bring that back when we need it. Okay. So we got these beats going on, and that's all well and good. Uh, so let's take a little detour into some different types of notes. Not all of our notes are the same. Some are small, and some are large, or if you want to think of it, some are long and some are short, take up more time or less time. And this just gives us a wide variety of choices so that when we have a rhythm in our head, we have lots of options to help us write that rhythm out. Uh, so we look at different types of notes. All right, the biggest type of note that we have is called the whole note. And it looks like that. It's just in like an oval line on its side. See that? Okay, so there's our whole note, and that's all well and good. Um, so to start out, we're going to say that this whole note takes up four beats. All right? Now, how many beats do we have in this measure? We have four. So that means that whole note would take up the whole measure. So that would be four beats worth of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this first beat that we come to here, and I'm going to write a whole note. Cool. Now guess what? We have no more room left. That whole note is so freaking big, it takes up all four beats. No room left for anything else. Makes it pretty easy. So let's bring this beat back, and I'm just going to play my top string, and I'm going to play a bunch of whole notes. We're just going to hear what they sound like in the context of a measure. So here's our beat. Ah oh, yes. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna count us in. And I'm just gonna play whole notes. One, two, three, four, one, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So as you can hear, every four beats, I play a note. And I let that note sustain for four beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Easy enough. All right, so that's what a whole note sounds like. It's really big. It takes up four beats. All right, the next type of note we can look at is half as big. What would be half of a whole note? A half note, of course. And a half note looks kind of like a whole note. It's got the oval line on its side, but then we add what we call a stem to it. By adding that stem on the right side here, we now have a half note instead of a whole note. And a half note would take up half as much time as a whole note. A whole note took up four beats, therefore a half note takes up two. All right, so I'm gonna take this whole note we have in the first measure and I'm just gonna add a stem to it. Now it is a half note. And so this half note is half as big as that whole note, which means that it only takes up one, two of our beats. It doesn't take up all four like the, the whole note because it's not as big. So it's taking up this beat, all of it, and all of this. So exactly half of the measure is full of this half note. All right, so that leaves us two extra beats. Now, in music, you can't just leave empty space. We can't just have a measure with four beats and only two of them are taken up. It's just, it doesn't work. So we have to put something in this other half of the measure. So let's just stick with something that we understand and let's add another half note on beat three here. All right, that half note also takes up two beats. Two plus two is four. 
we have four beats in the measure, therefore we have filled the measure. All right, so that means when, when I play, when I bring that beat back and I start playing, I'm going to be playing on beat one. I'm going to hold that note for two beats because the half note lasts for two beats. It tells me to hold that note. And then on beat three, I'm going to play another half note, and that lasts for two beats as well. So that'll take up beats three and four, after which I'm just going to go back and do it all over again. So the notes are going to come a little bit quicker because each one of these notes is shorter, therefore I can play more of them. Let's listen. I'll play the A string this time just to keep it interesting. One, two, three, four. half notes takes up exactly two beats. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. All right. How are you feeling? You with me so far? Because we're going to go to one more type of note here, which is going to really bring all this stuff together. All right. We did the whole note, that was four beats. We did the half note, which is half of a whole note, which is two beats. So what would half of a half be? Quarter, a quarter note. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that half note and I'm just gonna fill it in. So it's not an empty circle anymore, now it's a filled in circle and it's got the stem. This gives us a quarter note. And a quarter note takes up one beat, because it is half as big as the half note, which took up two, and the half note's half as big as the whole note, which took up four, which is the mm -hmm. biggest note that we have. All right, so this is cool. We're now getting to our final stage of understanding a very basic rhythm, how a rhythm is written. All right, so I'm going to take these half notes here, and I'm going to fill them in, which will turn them into quarter notes. And each of those quarter notes, again, will take up only one beat. So what, that's, what that means is, right here on beat one, I got a quarter note. All of beat one is full, because this beat is as big, this note is as big as the beat, so it's totally full. On beat two, I have nothing, which can't really happen. We gotta put something there. Uh, on beat three, we have another quarter note, which only takes up all of beat three. And then on four, we also have nothing. So like I said earlier, we can't just leave nothing. There is something we can put there that represents nothing, which we'll get to a little bit later. But for now, we had to fill it up with something. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. So let's go with this quarter note pattern here. And we're going to switch to blue for no reason, except my black pen ran out of ink. So there's another quarter note on two, and there's a quarter note on four. And now we have a complete measure, which is what we want. All right. So each quarter note takes up one beat. So in each of our four beats, I have put one quarter note. So that's exactly as many quarter notes as I can possibly fit into this measure. All right, and this is where we get to fill in this space I left over here. All right, now this is, this is tricky. A lot of people have difficulty with this. This top number makes a lot of sense. All right, you're only, you're counting to four, and then you count to four again, then you count to four again. All right, I get it. That's the number of beats per measure. That's as high as we count before we just go back to one and start over again. Now the bottom number has to correspond to one of our note types. All right, note types. In this case, we're talking about whole notes, half notes, and quarter notes. We'll get to more notes later, but those are the three we've covered. All right, those are our note types that I'm talking about. So the bottom number has to correspond to a note type. All right, so think of it this way. 
If you bake a cake, and you pull that cake out of the oven, you let it cool, you put some icing on it, you some candles, right on it, whatever you do to a cake, and you're sitting there looking at this cake, how many pieces of cake do you have? You got one giant piece of cake, right? You have not cut this cake, you have not shared it with anyone yet, it is intact, therefore it is one huge piece of cake. If you were really hungry and uh, feeling sad about yourself, you could eat that whole cake and not cut it up, because who cares, it's just for you, right? One giant piece. So that means that the number one in this location refers to a whole note. All right? Think about that. The number one, right here, which I'll put there in a minute, refers to a whole note. Not a quarter note. A quarter note takes up one beat, but a one represents a whole note, because if you have one thing, you have a whole thing. It hasn't been divided yet. With me? All right, so that means if I put a number two here, mm -hmm. that would represent a half note, because if you cut that big old piece of cake in half, because you're only half as sad as you thought you were, then you'll have two pieces of cake, two giant pieces of cake. So a two would tell us that would correspond to a half note. All right, so what I'm going to put here is a four, and a four represents a quarter note, because quarters are fourths of a whole, right? Four quarters to a dollar, for example. All right, so here we have finally arrived at something we call the time signature, and it precedes, or should precede, every rhythm that you read. Every piece of music should have some kind of time signature at the very beginning. Because without it, we are kind of floating in space. It's, without it, essentially, we have that big void that we started out with. We have no idea what anything means. All right? So by putting this here, we have two uh, attributes, if you want to think of it that way, that help define what's going to happen in that rhythm and help us understand it. The top number tells us how many beats we have in each measure. So in this case, we have four of them. We've taken the space and we split it into four smaller pieces. Each piece we call a beat. The bottom number corresponds to a type of note and tells us how many uh, beats that type of note gets. Alright, so this tells us that we have a quarter note and that every quarter note gets one beat. If I had put a two there, every half note would get one beat. If I put a whole uh, one there, that would mean every whole note would get one beat. All right. This I'm starting out with because it is known as uh, common time, uh, four four time or common time, and it is known as that because it is so common. There is four. Most of the songs you hear are in four four. There are some other com some other common time signatures, but four four by far is the most common and it kind of helps us understand everything that's going to happen from now on. All right, so one last time before I wrap up this video and we play these quarter notes and hear what they sound like. Time signature, right over here. Top number is the number of beats per measure, and the bottom number corresponds to a type of note, one for whole, two for half, four for quarter. In this case, it's a four. Therefore, the quarter note gets one beat. So when I see a quarter note, I understand that that is taking up an entire beat by itself. All right, let's put that beat, get that beat going, and we'll play these quarter notes, and we'll call it a day. All right, let's do this one with a chord just to spice things up. We'll do G. All right, so there's our pulse, there's our beat. Take a moment, just feel it. I'm going to count us in, then I'm going to play quarter notes. But that means I'm going to strum once per beat. One, two, three, four. One strum per beat. One, two, three, four. One, two.
All right, so in conclusion, to understand a rhythm that you are about to read, or if you want to write a rhythm that you have in your mind, you must start with this thing over here, which is known as the time signature. The top number tells us the number of beats per measure. The bottom number tells us how big each beat is. And it has to be, it has to correspond to one of the types of notes that we talked about. Then in your measure, you can start to fill up that measure with different types of notes, which we'll look at in lesson number two. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.